Sometimes we want to represent the components of a tensor in a coordinate system that shows us the largest and smallest values of stress. It turns out that this is also the coordinate system that makes all the off-diagonal shear stresses go to zero. This coordinate system can always be found because the stress tensor is always symmetric, which means that it always has real eigenvalues. These are the so-called principal stresses. The first is the largest normal stress, and the third, by convention, is the smallest. The eigenvectors define the principal coordinate system in which all the shear stresses are zero. Understanding the magnitude of these principal stresses and their directions helps you visualize whether the stress is happening along tissue fibers or may be perpendicular to them. When stress acts perpendicular to tissue fibers, there is a chance that the tissue can actually rupture. Thus, when studying stresses acting on an organ, tissue, or section of an organ, we may want to find the principal stresses. The principal stresses are, in essence, the maximum and minimum values of the normal stress that you can get. You are able to find the principal stresses when the shear stresses are zero. A good way to visualize what I mean is by picturing a box. When you try to push the box by pressing your hand against one of the faces, you apply a normal force or stress onto that face. If you are perfectly perpendicular to the face of the plane, no shear stresses should occur. When you apply the same force at an angle or at the corner between two faces, the normal component is smaller despite the force being the same. This results in a shear component or a component of stress parallel to the face. Now think about how a simple rotation of the box could get the normal stress to be its maximum value while the shear stress becomes zero. The highest normal stress component will occur when the shear component is zero. This makes sense since the stress would not have to distribute itself between normal and shear components. It is then simply defined by the normal component. These highest and lowest normal stresses are what we would consider the principal stresses to be. If you have the stress tensor, finding these principal stresses is actually really straightforward. To find the magnitude of the principal stresses, all you need to do is find the eigenvalues of the matrix. To find the direction of the principal stresses, all you need to do is find the eigenvectors of the matrix. Let's do a quick example. In this problem, we were given the stress tensor and we want to find the magnitude of the principal stresses. Let's analyze this tensor first. We can get the normal stresses from the diagonal components, which give us 2 pascals, 1 pascal, and 5 pascals as the normal stresses. Then, we can get the shear stresses from the off-diagonal components. Remember that the stress tensor is symmetric. Sigma 2, 1 equals sigma 1, 2, which is 0 pascals. Sigma 1, 3 equals sigma 3, 1, which is 1 pascal. Sigma 2, 3 equals sigma 3, 2, which is 2 pascals. Now, to find the magnitude of the principal stresses, we need to find the eigenvalues. We can get the eigenvalues by solving this characteristic equation. Subtract one lambda from the diagonal components and take the determinant. Feel free to pause to check the math if you need a refresher. Solving this equation tells us that the principal stresses are 6 pascals, 1.87 pascals, and 0.09 pascals. Convention lists the first principal stress as the highest one and the third principal stress as the lowest one. I will leave finding the direction of these principal stresses as an exercise for you. Make sure to check your answer using a calculator. That's always helpful. We will review more of how to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors in future videos. For now, keep in mind that it is nothing out of this world to find these principal stresses, and with the tools you currently have, they are quite obtainable. I will see you next time.